just so everybody knows our efforts are kind of being redirected and uh, know that you'll always have access to the OPR SharePoint page where our trainings are held and uh, you'll also be able to access them in TMS. Um, so I just want to say thanks. Thank you to the audience, all those in uh, attendance. Um, it's been a great pleasure of mine to learn uh, more about the AUS uh, job series, uh, how we uh, provide better service to um, our customers. And I really hope that the information that Stephen and I have provided you have helped you along the way. So without further ado, uh, I'll kick this uh, training series off on software as a service. So welcome to another session of the AUS training series. I am Martin Wallace, one of the WISNIC AUSs, and I'll be your guide through this topic. And in case the term WISNIC is new to you, it stands for Western States Network Consortium. My fellow WISNIC and AUS, Stephen Clements, will be monitoring the chat because I might ask you some questions along the way. And if there are any general questions, he will be happy to assist you. If you have any questions specifically for me, please let me know at the end of the class. And some of you might notice that your mics are muted at this point in time. I will, I will provide you your mics at the end of the class. So this class is being recorded for posterity and these slides will be made available after the class. So my first question of the day is what is SAS? Please put your definition in the chat. And while you're thinking about it, I just want to provide some more information and while Stephen's waiting for the answers to come in. But AUSs are now beginning to see an uptick in customers desiring SaaS and we're covering this process because there are requirements involved to attain SaaS correctly. And as an AUS, you will eventually be faced with assisting a customer with their SaaS purchase. So understanding the ins and outs of FedRAMP and the VA marketplace will be essential to your success. So Stephen, how are we doing out there? So we've got some folks uh, to very honest position saying uh, no clue, no idea. Uh, we got a long term license for software um, and there's some people I suspect think they're uh, their potential future masterminds and they pulled one over on you. They answered software as a service oh. is what software as a service is. Wow. Man, some some well, it sounds like the audience out there has got a pretty good clue about what this but, is all about. They're participating, so that's good. That's good. Keep it's, it up. It is fantastic. So we're going to continue. So the intended audience for this class is the AUS. So we're, let's review our task and purpose. Our task today is to familiarize the AUS with what SaaS is and how to help the customer purchase it. Our purpose is to ensure that the AUS is an expert guide and educator for the SaaS ordering process and knows how to begin the SaaS intake process. And our desired outcome is that attendees will understand how to perform relevant market research, guide customers through the SaaS process, and manage customer expectations. Let's look at today's agenda. I intend to explain to you uh, what the AUS role is, why that role, what SaaS is, where to begin with your market research, how FedRAMP and VA Marketplace apply, how to buy SaaS, our summary and some future studies. I checked the PD for references related to SaaS purchases and didn't find a thing. There is literally no reference, but that does not get the AUS off the hook. Instead, I found these key points within the PD that speak to the AUS being the liaison and advisor on contract related services. From our major duties, I noticed that the AUS should develop supporting artifacts, conduct analyses, and recommend courses of actions. Additionally, the AUS should develop local policy, procedures, SOPs, and associated training material. Furthermore, the AUS is to establish, expedite, and review consolidation of all procurement packages, including those that are unique. SAS is unique and will require some time to navigate the procurement process. So how did we get here? In 2008, contracting separated from the VA, which left a gaping hole, a lack of facility support, and people who understood contracting. In 2016, the AUS was created. Now in theory, 
contracting can do the job of the AUS because the regs do call for the COs to be involved in the acquisition process early on. In practice, however, contracting doesn't even want to hear about our contracting request until we submit them through force. But when we do submit our request into force, contracting expects them to be complete, and this should include Fatera approval. If the force package is not complete, then contracting will return your package. This is not the time the AUS would want to get involved, as we should be involved long before the contract package is submitted to ensure the package is complete states the need clearly, and all documentation is required is provided. As our facilities acquisition experts, quality control is up to us. By making sure the requirements packages we send in are top notch, we help our customers meet the mission of caring for our veterans. As many of you in the audience suggested, SAS stands for Software as a Service. According to the National Institute of Standards Technology, SAS is defined as cloud computing, a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. And SAS has five characteristics. It has to be on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, measured service. Why would I take the time to explain this to you? Because your customers probably won't understand what SAS is. All the customer knows is they want product X. As an AUS, you're going to have to provide some guidance to your customer concerning uh, SAS because OIT is not going to purchase all the software for VA and your customer knows only one thing. My facility AUS is the expert on the contracting process. Plus, I am sure many of you have already realized OIT at your facilities aren't going to provide you any assistance. So we are going to go over this material to make you smart on the process and to provide you tools so you can assist your customer. Courtesy, courtesy of our friends at the Digital Transformation Center, this slide shown presents some questions to help you and the customer figure out if the software desire is SaaS or not. So you might ask these questions. Is it web hosted? How would VA users access the solution? How would VA users authenticate? What is the web architecture? Meaning is it flexible, scalable, or easy to customize? And here are some additional questions you might consider. At a high level, are metrics and events logs captured? Are any vendors sourcing development activities from personnel that reside OCONUS? And are any of the vendors allowing access to a FedRAMP boundary or federal data to personnel that reside OCONUS or out of the United States? These questions should aid you in determining whether or not the intended product is SaaS or conventional software. And here we're going, going to discuss pizza as a service. I know you're disappointed it wasn't Tic Tacs. On the previous slide, we discussed some questions to assist the AUS and customer in figuring out whether or not the software being purchased is plain old software or SaaS. To demonstrate how those questions apply, let's look at this analogy. Everyone likes pizza, I'm sure. In this scenario, you can order it your way. Not really. This is a practice geared toward understanding uh, the ordering of SAS. As you can see, we have several questions or options. Let's start with, how are we going to receive our pizza? Do we elect to make it at home, which could mean the VA creates the SAS software and houses the data on local servers? Take and bake is an example of VA owning the infrastructure, but relying on the vendor to manage the software. And in the case of pizza delivery, VA manages the platform and the vendor manages the software and data. And finally, when the VA goes out to dine at its favorite pizza joint, this is where the vendor manages everything. This means the vendor is responsible for the hardware, infrastructure, software, and data. This is VA's order for the supreme pizza with all the fixings. Hopefully the pizza as a SaaS slide got you, got you salivating and now everyone wants pizza for lunch. 
Seriously, as you progress through the evaluation process of the software, the customer desires, you will encounter a issues with trying to figure out how the data is going to be managed. Here are some questions to help you with that. So when you're evaluating your data, you may want to ask or work with a customer and ask, is the solution owned or operated by the by VA or a vendor? Is the information created on behalf of the VA by the system or vendor? Is the data or information collected for the VA specifically? Will VA process information and maintain data or will the vendor do it? Who is hosting the solution? The VA or vendor or the vendor? How will the information be disseminated internally or externally? A formal data security categorization will be scheduled by the Digital Transformation Center. This will determine if the solution needs FedRAMP and VA authorization, or if it can operate with any, without any further security. Worth noting, once you are at this stage, it will be time to reach out to the Digital Trans Transformation Center's Project Special Forces. One final point in the slide, the data security categoriz categorization. This is a process the project special forces team provides the vendor or walks the vendor through. So why did I bring this up? Well, the vendor has to pass the security categorization or VA will not allow the customer to utilize the product and you will need to find another product. The purchase of SAS is not an easy process so utilize the DTC's PSF, which stands for Project Special Forces, their team, and their team is trying really hard to streamline the process. This DSC seems to be a big deal, and rightfully so. Here's some background about the formal data security categorization or the DSC. Essentially, this is a security compliance review of a vendor system or software. It is conducted by FedRAMP, provides a common framework, and allows agencies to review security requirements against a standardized baseline. Once the cloud service provider goes through this review at the FedRAMP approval, all agencies are allowed to reuse the security package. There is a cost associated with this review, and I'm going to show you some possible prices for this review on the next slide. So here's some information about the estimation for the FedRAMP security packages. This is the cost FedRAMP applies to conduct a DSC when a vendor applies to have their product reviewed and approved by FedRAMP. So these are some estimations that you could include in your IGCE or your contract package um, when you're ordering SAS. All right. Now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts and talk about how we assist our customers with their SaaS software purchases. Every project that AUS supports requires market research. I provided a link to Stephen's market research training for your reference in the presenter's notes. There are several places market research can be conducted. Your first stop will be FedRAMP. And if you are unfamiliar with the acronym, it stands for the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. FedRAMP has a list of approved SaaS on the website marketplace. VA marketplace like FedRAMP has a list of SaaS that has been approved for VA access. But there is still a purchase or reuse process that will still need to be conducted. TRIM, TRM, or the technical reference model can be utilized as TRM provides a link to VA marketplace. And the OSS, OI, and T page is where help can be found when trying to purchase SaaS. Everything on the slide in purple are links for your reference. If you're thinking, should I use SOUP? In this case, it is not really an initial market research tool. SOUP could help you with your search for SAS, but it's not approved by FedRAMP, so you won't be able to use it. Now, first stop, FedRAMP. FedRAMP is the initial gateway for cloud service providers and it is a tool used by federal agencies to adopt SaaS products. FedRAMP is the federal arm that will approve, disapprove a SaaS product for federal use. You can find quite a bit of information on the FedRAMP homepage about how vendors get approved. It's all free information and there for you to explore. 
Our second stop is going to be the VA marketplace. Here you can see if the requested SaaS software has already been approved for VA use. If you find your SaaS software on the VA marketplace, the procurement process will be significantly reduced. If it is not, there is a request form on FedRAMP you can fill out and submit if your SAS is FedRAMP approved. This will then notify the DTC project special forces, the customers interested in a particular SAS. You will receive a confirmation email and be contacted to set up a kickoff meeting. So let's go on a safari and take a look at some of this stuff like FedRAMP, VA Marketplace, Trim, the OSSOINT homepage for SaaS software. Oh, wrong page, that went wrong. So the first page I want to show you is the Office of Information and Technology Software as a Service page that you can receive some help at. Here you've got your SAS home, SAS frequently asked questions about the SAS process. If you don't understand it and you want to understand it better, you can dig into the SAS process here uh, to understand how the VA uh, utilizes SAS software that's approved on FedRAMP and then the product marketplace. Click on this button right here for the SAS process. And we'll talk, it, it walks you through the intake process. It talks you through the acquisition process. Your security and implementation. And we'll look at the product marketplace. Here you'll find at least up to seven pages worth of already certified software that has been FedRAMP approved and approved for VA use. So if you've never seen this page, uh, again, you in the PowerPoint, I've left you links to this page for your reference. Let's take a look at the FedRAMP homepage. Uh, this is your FedRAMP homepage. Uh, as you can see, you've got a button here in the beginning for learning program basics. You can meet the process. You can look at how the cloud service providers, the process that the cloud service providers have to go through, how federal agencies adopt innovative cloud services, and you get a look at uh, what the assessors can do. You can also look at the federal FedRAMP marketplace with this button right here in the right-hand corner. Click on that, and it will tell you that there are 22 ready that have been recently certified, 94 in process that are going through the certification process, and that there are 307 authorized. Now, this number changes quite fr frequently, and so does the ready one, and so does the process, but because it's an ongoing process of approval. But you can see here there are pages long pages of approved software. So feel free to peruse that at your leisure and uh, learn about more of the software that's available to you out there when your customers come to you saying, I need software X. This will be your first spot to start. And then TRIM, TRM, your technical reference model. Went through this during my Fitera training and in the noticed during that training, I showed you that there was a link here that you could click that will literally take you over to the Office of Strategic Sourcing uh, YNT page, right back at the beginning, straight to the marketplace. Um, so if you forget how to access it through other means, you can always go through Term and get the same support. Back from Safari now, and we are now complete with the concept of what is SAS. We're going to press forward and look 
at how to buy SaaS and the four types of product requests. So again, there are four types of product requests. The first being the product you want is approved. The product you want is pending approval. Don't see the product you want in FedRAMP or VA Marketplace. And you're not sure what product you need. How about this? Did you know there were timeframes for SaaS approval you could provide to your customer based off the four product request types? Nothing has frustrated a customer more than learning a product they were interested in will take two years to gain approval through FedRAMP. And if you're like me, you may have had to deal with this frustration. At least now, you will be armed with some useful information and be able to better prepare your customer for the SaaS procurement process. These timeframes are listed in order for the easiest process to the hardest. A reuse is the easiest process. It means it's already cleared by FedRAMP and already on VA Marketplace. Bullet two is when the product is on FedRAMP, but not on VA Marketplace. It's still a reuse request, but it requires the project special forces team to work their magic to make it available on the VA Marketplace. And bullet three is when our customer finds a really cool product, but the vendor has not even started the FedRAMP process. So this is the really long process. A for your information moment, all timeframes are dependent on the vendor's involvement in the process. So our first product request type is about our product being approved. This means the product is FedRAMP approved on, on, and, and on the VA marketplace and funding is available. Now it's only a determination of how the VA data will be managed, but the PSF will figure this out. This statement of VA data or no, or no VA data is important as it will be listed on your SAS approval memo. And this is a continuation of our product being approved. You'll contact the PSF to navigate the process, complete your cloud product request, submit your forms, You'll get your confirmation email and, you, and the PSF will schedule a kickoff meeting with you. So let's say you run across this while performing market research on the product your customer is interested in and your customer says, what does this mean? Now you have information you can share with them. And what it means when it says pending approval is it's completed most of the ATO approval process. The time frame for approval is four months to a year depending on where they are in the process. Uh, the product will undergo a VA security compliance review. And if you still want to continue, you'll submit your product request form. You'll receive a confirmation email. And like before, the PSF will contact you and schedule a kickoff meeting. And if your product is on FedRAMP, but not on VA Marketplace, you can provide your customer with this information. It'll take up to two years for approval. Might want to recommend browsing FedRAMP catalog for a different product to see if there's already one approved that'll meet the same needs or requirements of your customer. PSF will help navigate the process. You can complete a new product request form. The link is in the slide. You can fill out a new product uh, form. The, the form takes five to 10 minutes to fill out. A confirmation email will be sent once it's received, and your PSF will contact you and schedule your kickoff meeting. So, you're not sure what product you need. You'll fill out your consultation request form. You'll submit it, receive your confirmation email detailing the next steps, and consult with the PSF. When the project special forces team receives a request to utilize a SAS product, the team then executes an intake process or what is called the project special forces gateway review. There are two conditions. The first is that the software has not been procured. In this condition, the project special forces will work with the customer to figure out how to proceed. The first place, the 
PSF will start is with FedRAMP. And we've already discussed the course of action from there. The second condition is if the SAS has already been procured by a federal agency. This improves the procurement process because the PSF knows the SAS has already received an authority to operate or what we call an ATO. And in this case, a federal agency can reuse the ATO. In either case, the project special forces team will require the following documents to assist them with the customer's purchase of SAS. And those are the DSC conducted by the PSF acquisition plan and a financial management plan. They wanna know where is the funding. So continuing with the intake requirements, once you get to this point and the vendor has complied with the PSF security compliance review, the customer can expect to receive a SAS approval memo. Again, I've embedded a copy of a SAS memo so you can have a copy, but no, you can't reuse it or submit a fake SAS memo. It is only a copy for your reference. So here's an example of a SAS approval memo. As you can see, it'll come with the date. It's from the Project Special Forces. Um, your subject will talk about the particular software you're interested in. You'll have your critical decision, your VIPR number, the SAS product uh, process where I mentioned the VA or no VA data. It'll be signed and dated. Once you receive the SAS approval memo, your next step is to submit an application for approval through the ARM application, which can be found in a budget tracking tool. For those AUSs on the call that don't use this tool and allow the customer to submit the ARM request, which there's nothing wrong with, make sure during the review of the requirements package, you look for the approval document. If your procurement is for SAS, then you will need the documents listed for a SAS purchase. In the WISNIC, there has been an alarming number of packages returned and AUSs, cores, or whomever have had to get spooled up on the budget tracking tool and ARM process quick, fast, and in a hurry. Ask Visit 19 about that. I did training last year on the submission of an ARM application and I have provided the link to the training in the presenter's notes for your use. After point one, Sorry. So let's talk about no VA data. So this is user owned and the VA provided devices can use SAS product, set the SAS product to share patient data. For examples of your CPAP, your glucoma, uh, glucometers, uh, has no direct connections or interfaces to the VA systems or network. The users consent to share their data directly with the SAS provider. SAS provider must be must have published terms and conditions and the VA provider access data in a view only mode or limited functionality per a user's consent. So if there's no VA data being stored within the SAS product, then this could potentially be a faster process with a PSF. Just to mention the time of shotgun buys, uh, hoping you can ask for forgiveness later are over uh, the VA We'll spend more money and our customers will be impacted the most. So our quick, we're going to do a quick review and we're beginning with FedRAMP. If the software, if the software is listed in FedRAMP, you're in good shape. If your product is on FedRAMP but not on VA Marketplace, this is a better place to be. If the product is not on FedRAMP, you'll fill out your product request form on the FedRAMP page that's provided to you on the FedRAMP page. Bullet four, this is a great place to be. Fill out the product request form and stand by for the confirmation email to begin the kickoff meeting. Once you receive your SAS approval memo, 
fill out the budget tracking tool arm submission to receive your budget tracking tool approval memo for requirements package documentation. That will be the final documentation you need for your force package is your uh, budget tracking tool approval memo. And now that we've discussed what can be expected from SaaS purchase process, let's summarize some key takeaways. So SaaS products are ready to use software products that are immediately available from third party software companies. First step should be to review SaaS products available on FedRAMP and VA Marketplace. And the SaaS purchases begin with submitting a product request form, which provides the customer access to the PSF. And your final step for the SAS purchasing process ends with the receipt of an approved SAS memo and a final Fatura approval. So while this is as much as we have time to cover this topic, to learn more about adopting software as a service at the VA and how to become FedRAMP authorized, I provided links within the slide highlighted in purple for your reference. Uh, and those are the SAS process from the Office of Information and Technology and how to become a FedRAMP authorized uh, user or provider, I should say. And for my last question to you, my beloved and exceedingly good looking and above average in every respect audience, did you find that this class helped you learn for the first time or refresh your knowledge about the SAS process? If so, great. What did you find most helpful? And if not, what did we miss? What would have made this more helpful? We want to make these classes as useful as possible in the time allotted, so please put your answer in the chat or email us. What's it look like, Stephen? Did we help anybody? Uh, well, you made somebody freaking hungry for pizza. <laughs> so you made someone's day slightly worse because they I wanted something goal, that right? they wanted to wanted to have, but they couldn't because they were fastidious and came to this class. That's <laughs> all that was helpful and informative and lightning, enlightening. You got enlightening. And uh, let's see, absolutely uh, new for the first time. Okay. And um, let's see, good to know. Uh, but more enlightenment. Uh, you're you're doing it. You're you're causing enlightenment. Some bodhisattva is going to come out of this class. Uh, let's see. Yep, it's it's looking good. And we got a few questions mixed in here, so we'll get to those in a minute. And pizza with the garlic and onions and some tic tacs for afterwards. That person knows how to live. Gary knows how to live. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, more confusion. Okay. Well, you know, uh, confusion is something you often find on the way to, on the journey to truth, um, uh, unfortunately. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. And uh, another person says helpful, but I feel like I need to go through it a few times. Yes, uh, because what Marty's just given you is the introduction and overview. And if you listen to this recording a few times, go over the slides, read the presenter's notes for yourself. Um, that'll help it sink in, but nothing will help it sink in like jumping in the deep end and 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 working with the sites looking at the things he showed you i'm working up pretty on mics if there's any questions just give me one second because it's like not behaving okay should be is it safe and now everybody's mics should be available Oh my God, first hand up, Marie Kurtenbach. Yeah, I think the key thing to remember is that going to the TRM, when you click on that link, when you're in Batar or BTT, when you click on that and you cannot find this software, then that's what's going to send you down the SAAS route. So it's something pretty simple. If it's not in TRM, this is the route you're going to end up having to go. And it will cost the business that wants to get on the network some money. So that's all I had. Thanks, Marie, for that. We got Martha information. Ray, so Excuse me. There's a shot her hand up. And while you're talking to Martha, I'm going to go back through the chat and see what we got. 
Hey, Mr. Wallace, how are you doing? Thank you for the training. My only question is I submitted a package for Vision 2 l here for a software that's already being used in the majority of the VAs on the West Coast for employee survey. So when I met with my CEO, I, per I gave her everything she needed for the, um, the procurement package in force and also for TAR. However, she told me our facility still may have to wait up to two years, even though other facilities already, you know, use this software. So explain that, please. OK, so software that's already in existence still needs to be Viterra approved, right? Um, so what you're what she's telling you is that or what she. Is missing, I think, is that. Uh, well, was, OK, not missing. What she was trying to advise you on is the fact that if the software that's already in existence and on the network actually hadn't gone through FedRAMP approval, it will now have to go through FedRAMP approval if it is a SaaS type software. Uh, an example of that would be Mentor Click, for example. Federal agencies that I've heard, Department of Homeland Security are using this software. It's a SaaS software called Mentor Click. It's been in existence. Uh, before the government started taking account for all their IT related spending. So it was grandfathered in. But now that it is coming down to the wire where the contract is ending, Mentor Click is now has been informed that they are, need to go through the SAS process to get certified. They've already begun that process, in which case it would be move you to do some research and figure out if this particular software that you're purchasing uh, again has is a SAS or is located in TRM and has it already gone through the uh, federal fed ramp approval process. Um, so it's just a little some background that you'll have to figure out, but that's what she's trying to say is that she doesn't know if it's fed ramp approved. Uh, so you, what she was giving you was worst case scenario of two years. You may find that you don't have to wait two years. Uh, the best people to contact for any information regarding that is your is that project special forces team on the OSS OINT page. Uh, they are a phenomenal group and have been able to answer every question that I've thrown at them or and some of the other uh, AUSs that I've directed toward them have gotten their answers uh, pretty quickly from that team. So does that help, Martha? Yes, thank you so much. And also my other question is you do have to have this pre-approved through FATAR before you submit all this. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Yes, you I need did it right. You trained me very good. You trained me very good. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> all right, I see one question here. How does this process affect software needed for clinical equipment? Uh, that is in that for the answer for that, you would have to review the Fatera guide, the VA Fatera guide. As I was discussing with another AUS, uh, in, in, in one of our visions yesterday, uh, some medical devices, some medical equipment, uh, in Annex A, uh, do not require Fatera approval. Um, yes, they may have some IT parts to them. Or IT related, you know, parts going on with them, but some medical devices do not require Fatera approval, and you'll find that in Annex A of the uh, Fatera guide. Um, does that help? Let's see. Does that help? Um, but yeah, I think uh, I might have been the person you were talking to earlier about that, um, because say you've got. Uh, a glucose meter and it feeds information into a computer uh well if you're the, the glucose meter that's that's a clinical care product so like the tax not interested in that it's not really an it or it related item and the supporting software for it is incidental um so from my understanding and marty correct me if uh, i got this wrong that you're OK with just going for the equipment. You don't have to go through all this uh, process. Right. Um, exactly. As long as you know, in that situation, if it's already installed on the veterans on a VA network, cool. But, you know, what we're finding a lot of times is that and, you know, so 
Another case or scenario that you might run into is exactly what Stephen was mentioning. You're using a glucometer, uh, but you're using a SAS program to track that. And as long as that SAS program doesn't uh, 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 attach to the VA network, which a lot of these SAS programs that people want to utilize, you'll find that you'll still be able to go out, purchase it. You'll have to go through the SAS process. It'd be much faster because basically it's not really recording any actual uh, PHI about the veteran. Um, it might just have his name. It might have his, you know, what his blood sugar is, uh, but that's about it. And then it'll be a reference for the, for the doctors that are utilizing that soft, that, that software or that software as a service. So uh, it just depends really uh, where it is, where the software is, you know, that we're actually trying to purchase for the VA's use. Is it, you know, and the barrier is, is it already in the VA network um, or is it going to be utilized outside the VA network and there's no real data uh, being collected about the, the veterans? So that's why in the beginning of this training, we ask a lot of questions to help kind of decipher that information uh, so you can better advise your customer. Okay, I see we got a hand up uh, from Martha, but before we get to her, I saw a comment. Uh, I wrote down questions to ask myself on how to determine if something's SAS or not, but it wasn't clear what the answers would be to indicate that it is. So for like the questions that you outlined, Marty, is it yeah. if yes, then it's SAS, if no, then it's not SAS? You could look at it like that, yes. Um, yeah, it, it would it would help uh, if you knew more about the software. Uh, trying to come up with an example, uh, what I kind of want to use this process that I'm going through right now for the mentorship, uh, for a mentorship software for the Wisnik that we're ordering. Good one. You know, I'm sitting down with my customer. We're asking those questions that are on the screen. We know the pro. We know the product that we want is a SaaS product. Uh, does it uh, store any VA data? Uh, we know that it's going to take you know names because it's going to match up uh, people uh, for for mentoring. Uh, we don't know. Outside of that, it should be the only information that we'll be providing. So, in a sense, we could say it'd be a no VA data situation. Uh, which may improve our odds of getting the process approved sooner, uh, but it's based off of whether or not the uh, vendor that owns the product has actually gone through the FedRAMP process. A lot of the things, a lot of software that we're buying has to go through FedRAMP to be approved to be able to use on any federal agency's network because they have to provide the necessary data uh, that the uh, the uh, protocols and information that the software utilizes uh, to FedRAMP and other agencies so that we know that uh, we can trust, basically have a trust relationship between uh, us and the vendors that are providing us the software that we're utilizing. Deal. So, and yeah, back to those questions. If you're, if if you want to say no, you know, I ask this question. If it's a yes, I ask this question. If it's a no, um, and you're like totally confused at the end of it, it is best to uh, use the consultation form that the Project Special Forces team has available you wanna, out there. You share your screen just to reiterate to so people can place your guidance with the the slides you're yeah, talking. Give me a second here. Okay. And as many of the comments have addressed and as Martin's addressed with his guides on timelines, this uh, acquiring software that our customers need to understand, your doctor uh, comes in and says, I want this thing. Congratulations, doc. You get to wait for two years because it's not already in the system. Uh, it's just nothing I could do about it, nothing you could do about it. It's just how the system's set up. So planning ahead is critical if you're going to be buying any sort of software. Yes. Uh, an example would be, 
uh, there's a software out there, uh, let's just say it's called Speak, and I ran across this, so I'm using this example. We worked with the customer, uh, let the customer know that they hadn't actually gone to FedRAMP, but some of the questions that we had to ask, you know, was, is this going to be a web hosted? How is the, how is this going to be supported? What, uh, what, what does your vendor actually utilize? So if you're talking about Amazon Web Services or Azure or some other type of data center, the reason that that is a concern is because the Project Special Forces wants to know at what level, meaning what security level is the information that we're going to provide, whether it's VA or, or customer data, PHI data, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, they want to know what security levels can be held at. Uh, it could be unclassified, it could be confidential, it could be at a secret level. In the open market, they don't actually run by unclassed, confidential, and secret, and top secret. They have other, uh, they might have an IL-2, IL-3, IL-4 level of security that they place on the information. If you look at the next question, uh, example, how do the VA users access solution? Is it a web browser, mobile app, iPad? Basically, are they logging in with a single sign-on, which would basically be the same way you do every day when you put your PIV card into your computer and you go out there and log on to the system uh, in, in order to get into the VA network if you're at home or um, sometimes even at work, you've got to log on and still uh, be able to access uh, VA information so that you can conduct your duties on a daily basis. If you're a veteran, but you're at home, and basically, let's say the software you bought is a username password, uh, there have to be, you know, the uh, there are licenses that are purchased that are provided to each user, uh, and it could be associated with a uh, a username password login type uh, of an event. Um, when we're talking about at a high level, you know, the metrics and the event logs that are being captured, um, you, they're talking about what kind of data are you providing? What's, you know, what's the interchange uh, of information that we're talking about here that we're, uh, that is being uh, utilized at uh, an offsite vendor's facility? And uh, how is that information protected? Again, with a user account, they, you know, name, your uh, password, uh, username, or do they have some type of uh, security PIV card that's provided to them that they can plug into their laptop and then uh, access, you know, the information. Um, and then these questions about whether or not uh, the the information is going to reside OCONUS uh, or within the United States. Um, that's a, that's a concern because we do have some facilities that are OCONUS. You know, you talk about Guam, Hawaii, the Philippines. Um, uh, and some other places uh, that might have uh, boundaries. Uh, you you want to make sure that the information is being housed correctly uh, and not someplace in China or uh, over in Russia. Uh, that's that's some of the concern about. You know, some of the questions, maybe, you know, it's high level, but it's still information that you as the customer and as the AUS steering the customer uh, should be aware of when you're out there purchasing these products for or helping to purchase these products for your customers. Because they just, some of them don't know. Some of these guys are doctors. They go to conferences and they're like, I want this new whiz bang tool. Um, and they walk in your office or give you a call and they're like, hey, I want you to get this for me. Like, okay, so first step, bed ramp. Go out there, see what's available, or TRM. You can go through TRM if it's not there. It'll take you over to the VA marketplace, and you can look at if it's available in the VA marketplace, and then you can go to FedRAMP to see if it's even available. Um, so those are the steps that we discussed today that you'll go through to guide your customer through this SaaS process, because the worst thing you can do is look at your customer and go, sorry, it's going to take two years uh, product. I mean, it kills them. Uh, they don't ever want to come back and talk to you, and they go and find other ways to try and get it done. Um, and I've seen that also. So uh, hopefully that helps with that question, gives you a little more information about 
I don't understand that. Probably our top commenter for the class, uh, Leland Pate, has been dropping some helpful uh, guidance in the in the chat because apparently he's in the ISSO and he's got his hand up. What's going on, Leland? Good morning and uh, thanks for having me. Um, as an outsider, I guess I just want to say that I hope that your folks across the country are engaging the facility ISSOs very early in this process because this is very much in our wheelhouse to kind of help guide the facility through the requirements, especially when they get technical. So, you know, you're not operating in a vacuum. You should be reaching out to your, your security officers. Agreed. And, uh, you know, we didn't mention it in this one, but we definitely went through in Fitera the last time about talking about your 6500 and, uh, you know, the documentation that's associated with that and when, you know, they would reach out to you, uh, the ISOs, for assistance in that process also. Um, Indeed, so indeed, and uh, in this very, very class, uh, and ISSO is uh, providing assistance, so it's proof they will help you. They'll help you. And yes. uh, Verna Snedekar, got your hand up. What's going on? Hi, I was asked to um, help one of my customers purchase some software in pharmacy. It's called Paid, P A D E. It's a VA, she just sent me the information. VA developed interface designed to provide two-way communication between Vista and CPRS and the OmniCell automated dispensing cabinets, which is the medication cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, is that does is that going to require us to go through this process? Did you sit? I think you, well, so I get some clarity. Did you say it was VA produced? It said paid is a VA developed interface designed to provide two way communication between Vista and CPRS, which is our um, tracking systems that we use right. for our patients, and OmniCell, which is the medication tracking system or dispensing system. Service and support of OmniCell equipment is required so that the medication reach patients in a timely and safe manner. It says VA developed interface. I don't know what that means. She just asked me that this morning and I saw this class. So I said, mm, let me get on here and see That's, if I can. Yeah, that sounds like our innovation team might have developed a, uh, the VA innovation team might have developed an interface and they called it paid, kind of like uh, the VA developed uh, ads up. Um, which is VA developed uh, to help with uh, uh, categorization and market research and, you know, several other things that we've kind of thrown at them that they've incorporated into it. Pharmacy automation, dispensing equipment, paid. So it's got a YouTube channel on it. I didn't, I looked it up in uh, FedRAMP. I didn't see that it was approved in there. It's not approved on TRM. Yeah, it's not, it's not approved in TRM. This might be something if it is uh, utilized or developed by an outside entity. I'm trying to find some information on it so I can give you some better gouge, but. Some weird stuff going on here. Let's see. This Department of Veterans Affairs, it looks like it might be uh, something that the VA actually developed. In which case, okay. How about we take this offline and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, if you could email me. Um, I'd be glad to try to give you some more information if or and walk you through the process if I can. How about that? What's your name? Is this, uh, Martin Wallace. Martin. Um, Martin yeah, I'm Wallace. new. I'm a new AUS, so I really don't, you know, I try to get on as many of these calls as I can to try to learn the process, but um, she just asked me this and I'm just so happy y'all was having this class. So I said, let me get on here and see if I can get any information for her. Yeah, uh, yeah if you want, we can get together. This will take a little bit more research to try to figure out what this interface is and whether it's uh, 
the VA, the VA produced it or whether or not it was something out, an outside entity that provided it to the VA, in which case we'll figure out how we go about getting this purchase for you. Okay. On the customer. Okay, thank you, I will. You're welcome. So similar to that product that you were just discussing about paid, there's another one that's somewhat close to that called Brilliant. And that was developed by an outside company for the VA. Um, and that one has just come online. So a lot of procurements have gone in to procure this and it coincides with CPRS. So maybe you can look at that software and hopefully it helps address what you're looking for with pay. Can you, can you drop that one in the chat? Please I can let her know that. I know we're doing a contract award for it right now. Hello. Yep, go ahead. What did she say the name of that other one was that she found? Called Brilliance. Oh, she did Brilliance she Super put in, Vista. Yeah, she put it Super Vista. Yeah, she put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Verna Snedekar, you got your hand up. I'm sorry, I just didn't drop it down. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Hey, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen another point uh, somebody wanted us to address, uh, except for that uh, Michael Hatton's going for, if I remember right, is going for his fax C. Uh, so good on you. That's some that's some great stuff because you know while uh, the classes me and Marty have written and provided, we're these are great introductions and as thorough overviews as we can make them within one hour or two hours in the case of the market research uh, report class. Uh, so if you're starting from nothing or you want a refresher, these classes are, are for you. Um, however, nothing replaces the in-depth uh training and education that comes with the uh fax c courses um and uh, like you know your con 1100 con 1200 con 1300 and um i highly encourage uh every aus to go for uh fax c certifications and uh sometime possibly june a beefed up version of that uh maybe rolling out um uh, called the AUS certification. Um, so to be certified as an AUS, uh, it's, and it's not required for your PD, but if you want a certificate that says you're a certified AUS, then it's the uh, it's the qualification to be a contracting officer plus some. So we're supposed to be those real experts um, over and uh, over and above even uh, the, the the journeyman level of uh, contract officer. Oh, thank you, Martin. Appreciate it. And I appreciate all the appreciation in the chat. All right, Stephen, what do you say we give it about another two minutes? And then we'll yeah, yeah. close it down. If there's no other comments. Can we change leadership mind on the training, please? Ah, well, I can't. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> um, we tried. We got shut down. You, you feel feel free to uh, make your opinions heard uh, or uh, see about 
giving your own training for this um and uh or or recruiting people to to do the same thing because what what me and marty have done uh, in theory any aus should be able to do that uh uh because we're supposed to be contract experts so we should all have this level of knowledge now obviously if you're a brand new person maybe you don't have that but you're supposed to get it and uh yeah i dropped it in the chat and uh i'll drop it again all right that's that was somebody's question uh knack order training that is its uh, own own particular beast that i would refer you to the nax website for or their sharepoint page uh, because they they are specific in what they want and uh, to the best of my knowledge the opr sharepoint site with all these uh, classes will remain there uh in perpetuity but if uh, for some reason it were to go down i am a uh, i believe in redundancy and uh g invoicing there's already training for that given by other people that's better than what we would be able to produce uh so uh, we leave it to them i believe it's gsa does a class for that <coughs> and if you go to this redundancy site i got it's uh on the uh wisnik uh current uh uh, BPAs and contract site. I've got a folder that says useful stuff that isn't a Wisnet contract, and in it I've got AUS training resources, including um, monthly AUS national training classes. It doesn't have as much cool stuff in it as the OPR one does, but just in case. And yep, hope Donnelly from OPR just uh, chimed in that yep they're going to keep that up because why waste it? Why waste the training? And by all means, take the slides that we made. And repurpose them for your own trainings that you give to people. Well, every one of our classes has a full presenter script. So you can just open it up and start reading. Not off the slide. You can just read it. We've got it all written out. It's as easy as it can be. All right, welcome, Cassania. And uh, thanks, John. Appreciate it. All right. Well, and just a final reminder, if uh, you you worry about uh, not being able to hear Martin's voice enough uh, going forward in the future, he's doing another session of the same class tomorrow. So you're welcome to come on by there. And don't forget, you can register in Cornerstone On Demand for a CLP uh, for this class. You just click the exter uh, register external learning event and um, and. Uh, <laughs> Well, unless you're in the Wisnik area uh, and a, a Wisnik customer, uh, you should uh, see your own uh, chain of AUSs for future guidance. And uh, y'all just got one in um, the Northeast. Um, Carol Miller, she's sharp, uh, so she'd be she'd be a good person for you to check with. But yeah, you can uh, register this for CLPs. Uh, what I do is I print the Outlook invite as a PDF as my proof because it's going to ask you to to prove it uh to give them some attachment and I upload that and for the training provider you just put martin wallace and uh go from there haven't had a problem i've gotten a bunch of clps giving the classes as uh you also get clps if you give classes uh, so make sure to take all the points you can get All right, well, I think that's it, Martin. Me too. See anything new coming along? Well, thank y'all for coming out. It's good seeing you. Good talking to you. Everybody, take care, everybody. Martin, can I call you now? <laughs>